I want this video to be as um, informative as possible. So um, let's get right into it. Uh, this is gonna be how you make a wig on a sewing machine. Now, first we're gonna start off with the heads. Now, there's different heads. There's honestly, I think the highest, um, the highest they have is like a 25 head. I'm not sure, it might be 26, but what I've heard of is a 25 head. Um, and I think it goes down to a 20 inch. Now, a typical a typical um, head, head, head size is normally a 22 inch. Um, and right now I'm doing a wig for a customer, so I am gonna be using a 22 block head because that's what the customer's head is. Now, when it comes to measuring the, um, what you need to make a custom wig for a customer, um, it all depends on the wig maker, honestly. Um, me, I can get away with just knowing the circumference of, circumference, circum, circumference, circumference, circumference circumference of the customer's head some um wig makers would also like to know the front the frontal to the nape area which is like let me just make sure i show you guys so you guys know exactly what i'm talking about so it'd be the frontal which i most of the time make a line just so i can know where to stop the cap so it'd be the frontal all the way down to the nape area some wig makers like knowing that as well um but me like i said i mainly just focus on the circumference of the customer's head which is a 22 but it like i said if you want it to be more customized and all that extra stuff then you can go ahead and do that um i don't necessarily have too too much problems with um with just the circumference but like i said it to each his own and this is very essential for when you are making a wig, you need a tape measure. And also, since we are going to be doing a, basically this is a medium sized head. So I'm gonna be using this um, mesh dome cap. This is the one that I use. This is the brand that I like to use. Um, honestly, there's other caps out there. Um, but honestly, most people kind of, this is a regular and most people kind of like this instead. So this is what I use. Um, and for a medium, for a medium and a small, Actually, for the 21 cap, I would prefer to use the, a kid's cap, which you can find on Amazon. If I find a picture, I'll post it so you guys can see. I'll use the regular dome cap, but if the head is but if the head is 23 or over, I'll go ahead and do the extra large, and then I would go in and um, customize the cap, which is basically sewing the cap to make it a little bit more customized, you could say, if it is a little bit too, too big, because this is an extra large cap. So I do extra large if I'm doing a head 23 or bigger. Now, one thing that I wanna know is that um, I did do that method before, and the customer did say that the wig was a little bit too loose and it was on their head. I mean, there was on their ears. Um, and the second time I just went ahead, instead of, uh, changing the the wig cap because their head was still a 23 head it was just that the cap was too big so i did go in with the regular size cap and then i just put it on a 23 dome head because that's still the circumference of their head you don't want the wig to be too too small so um that's a little tip if you guys ever run into that problem all right so now the way that I put this on is you guys see these different little things right here. I this is always going to be the front. Like you see where the two lines are separate. Uh, that's how I'm going to put the front. And like I said, I always have a little um mark in the front. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have a little mark where I do place the the cap first. I place the cap first. And then I literally just plop it on. Now, the reason why some some would like to know the front to the nape of the head is just so you can know exactly where to stop the stop the cap. But like I said, me, I don't necessarily really stretch it too much. I would literally just leave it like this. And then I would get one of the T-pins and I would pin the back. I don't really um, pull it too, too hard, but I do pull it enough so it can still stretch. And this is how it should look like. Like I said, I didn't pull it too, too much. And this is how it should look like. 
and then also one other thing you guys got to take into consideration is also the amount of hair that the client has and if you're doing this for yourself too that's good to know the more hair you have the more space you're gonna need in the cap so even though your head your circumference is a 22 but if you have a lot of hair that means you might have to use a large cap because you have a lot of hair underneath underneath that wig so you're gonna need more space so make sure you guys keep that in mind also that would be any type of problems that would you would come across with customers if they ever say anything um it's off about the sizing you got to put the hair into account as well or you just let them know that as well all right so i am going to be using my hair I'm going to be using my hair and this is Indian texture. I am going to be recreating my Pocahontas unit, but this is my hair. Um, and then I'm using a five by five closure. Now, when it comes to using any closures even higher, like a six by six or seven by seven, those do take a lot of space on here. And honestly, you kind of got to bunch it on there, but that's a tutorial for another day. All right. So, when it comes to this, the first thing you want to do is get the hair out the way. Like these T pins are very essential for when you are making wigs. So I'm sorry, you guys, my mom here in the background being so loud. Um, and right right now, I'm not gonna really show you guys what I'm doing because this, I just want to get the closure down so I can um, get my, the hair out my way. Okay, so once I got the closure down, now my main focus is to get the hair out the way. Most of the time I just put them in a ponytail, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I put it in a ponytail. You can just use some rubber bands, but I like to twist it because I like the hair completely out the way. Then I'm gonna use a clip to just clip it. Okay, so now this is the important part for you to actually um, put it in the right location. So when it comes to a five by five closure, if you are using this dome cap, um, the the five by five should reach up somewhere in between the these two lines. I'm not sure if you guys can see these lines that I'm talking about, but there's three lines in front of the of the dome head, and there's literally one, two three and a five by five closure literally falls on on each side of the uh, on the outer lines now it's important it's important for you to have the um the closure a little bit off a little bit off of the um uh, like half an inch i don't know if you guys can tell but like half an inch off the off the dome head off of the the cap and then I always make sure that I fix these as well and then you should get something like this where everything is flat like everything is flat and get to go so now is the fun part so I kind of bought these acrylic um acrylic silver pens now these ones are good but i would rather you just use a regular sharpie um gray marker instead because the tip of these are kind of annoying and you kind of got to keep pushing it so the the color can come out so this is okay but like i said if you could do the sharpie it's better um and also if you are wondering this doesn't really seep through yes you if you do press pretty hard clearly it's gonna kind of go through but it's not gonna look too too crazy to the point where it, all you see is straight lines inside the wig so don't even worry about that when it comes to you know that so after you get your wig position this part should be very simple you're just gonna literally outline outline that closure try not to get it on the hair like i am right now
Okay, so after you got everything outlined, now this is where the this is where the tape, the measuring tape is gonna play a big part. Okay, now what you're going to do is place place the measuring tape literally right at the end of that line that you just drew and then bring it down to the nape of the, the neck, which it should look like that. And then now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, if you are double wefting, which I am, um, normally I double weft my first two bundles and then the last one I will do single. But um, if you are doing single um, wefting all across, then I would say do half an inch. So right in the middle of the one, right in the middle of the one, that longer line, that's where you would place it. But me, like I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be double wefting, so mines are going to be right here and yes i know these may look big but i promise you guys it's not gonna look crazy especially if you are gonna be double wefting i thought the same thing when i um when i saw my first video of someone actually doing it i'm like bruh these things are gonna show throughout the wig but i promise you guys it's not and honestly, I don't even mind doing it this way, even if I am single wefting, because I, I'll know exactly where to put the single weft, which is literally right in the middle of it. So, I mean, like, once you actually just start doing this, it'll be a little bit more easier for you to, you know, for you to do it half each. Now, some people can just eyeball this and just do it without a measuring tape. I'm not that good yet, so I like to be precise. So I'm gonna go ahead and close those lines up. And don't even worry about your line being messy because this is supposed to just act like a guide for you. So even if it's messy, it's not like people are gonna actually see it because it's gonna be in the hair. So after that, I'm just literally just gonna continue following that line and closing up the gaps. I know I kind of got crazy at the end, but it's okay. Okay, now after you finish this, now you're going to take off the closure and then we're going to hop on the um, sewing machine. Okay, so when it comes to the sewing machine part, um, honestly, you can use any heavy duty sewing machine and I emphasize heavy duty because um, I did buy a regular, like, you know, a simple regular sewing machine. And that one was, the wefts was a little bit too strong for it. And it kept, um, it just didn't work. So make sure, you can buy whichever sewing machine you want. Just make sure that it's heavy duty. Because that's the one that's going to be able to, you know, make it a little bit more easier for you to make the wig. Now, um, this machine is pretty old, as you guys can tell. It's my mom's. So, um like sometimes this does give me problems but honestly um until it stops working i'm probably not gonna buy a new one because it works perfectly fine minus the times that you know it does act up a little bit and when it comes to the sewing machine i mean because i know you guys are probably gonna ask like what settings i use um i do use let me try to get you guys here a little bit closer so i do use this i used the 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 biggest zigzag i don't know if you guys can tell but you really need a machine that does zigzag because that's the majority of what they use so use the zigzag and i also leave the the i guess it's the stitch either the length or how strong it is i leave it on number four and everything else is pretty um self-explanatory so yeah so what I am going to do before I actually get into um, double wefting the bundles, I'm going to go ahead and um, add my, I don't, I forgot what these are called, wig tag. I'm going to add my wig tag inside the wig and I'm going to sew that in first. Now for that one, I use the regular straight, straight, um, the straight stitch for this one because I don't need it to go, um, you know, zigzag. So let's quickly sew this on. And you guys, sewing isn't like as hard as it seems. 
um i used to play around with it so i kind of knew some things i didn't i wasn't completely clueless because i knew a little bit but um you really don't necessarily have to know too too much about sewing machines to actually use it if you get what i'm saying And also make sure you guys know to use the reverse because this is gonna come in handy when you are making the wig. So I like to do reverse just to make it a little bit more secure. take my scissors let me stretch this out a little bit and then I literally just cut it and of course you guys I just use regular um black sewing thread now if you're doing like 613 or stuff like that then I would suggest you use like um white thread or new thread or something but this is what you will get after I sew it on now I'm gonna show you guys how I double weft now I'm gonna start off with two of the longest bundles, which is the 24 and the 22. Okay, so when it comes to double wefting, make sure you unravel your bundle and then now make sure that you have your settings in the um, zigzag method. And then also now I like to start with the end that's actually open. I've seen people use the side that's actually um, closed at the end, but I like doing it this way. Now I'm not like a pro pro at like double, double wefting, but I know for a fact that I've got um, so much better with double wefting. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna make sure you try to keep them together your whole thing now is you're gonna try to keep it together let me try to bring you guys a little bit closer so you can see what i'm doing okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna literally place both of the place place both of the the wefts underneath now make sure you properly place them and then you put your thing down now i can do this with one hand um some people like doing it like this like you can try to use both of your um pointer fingers and just try to pinch them together this way i don't know if you guys can see what i'm doing but pinch them that way but um like i said i kind of got used to it so i kind of know i um, mean i also back stitch a little bit just to secure it like you're gonna need to back stitch everything because the more you back stitch the more secure that the weft is gonna be and you don't want anything to start getting loose now when your whole point of this is to make sure you keep these two wefts together so both of them can get inside that um zigzag stitch Like I said, and always make sure, check like behind you to make sure that you're doing it right. But like I said, you can do this way. Use your fingers to make sure you keep them together. But I found just using my one hand and having this one pulling um, is a little bit more easier for me. And I just use one hand to keep the webs together. Okay, you guys, so I kind of finished um, the other bundle off camera because my camera was acting crazy. But at the end, this is what you're supposed to get. Now, um, this took me a long time to actually, you know, get it this, you know, neat. Not a long time. It just took me a couple of tries um, because the more you do it, the more easier that it's going to get. Um, 
and don't even worry if you don't get it right the first time just you can always you don't even have to get mad and like take this off um you can just re-go over it again and you should be fine like i said i already did this to the first bundle right here i meant the second bundle right here okay so now is the part where we're gonna be sewing now um i kind of like the hair to be on the outer edge so um i do do it that way but honestly if you don't mind the the um hair in this section i just don't like it because sometimes the hair is too much to pass underneath this hole so i just basically try to sew this way so i make sure that i angle my um my cap in that direction so i would literally place the end part and i would start it at the first line Okay, I want you guys to really see. Hopefully you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. The whole goal is just make sure that you have the the weft flat and also you're following the lines that you created. And um, a key part to this is honestly, I mean, this is something that you're gonna eventually learn throughout, which is you have to have a good eye. You have to have a good eye because you're gonna have to know um, sometimes where you're gonna have to not double um, double weft, or if you see that you're running out of um, weft and you still have a lot of you know space to go, then instead of doing this, then you would go ahead and skip and do the top one because it's very important for you to close it off, and then you can go back and fill in any you know missing parts once you know you make sure you got the top because the top is really what's gonna like you know basically show the bottom doesn't really show that that much i mean to make sure everything is is clean but this is like i said this is something you're gonna eventually learn to have an eye for to know when you need to skip some lines when you're gonna have to not double weft anymore and so on and so forth and i kind of learned that the hard way because i had to unweft a lot of these plenty of times because i ran out of um um, hair to finish off the wig now what we're gonna do is again this is on the zigzag and I literally place it right on top of the weft and then now we're gonna place this down and then when you get to at least an inch an inch or an inch and a half well at least an inch and then I go back I go back and then and this is important because like I said you want to always make sure that you seal off the weft to make sure that it doesn't unravel at the end and then now after you do it I only do it once I see some people do it um three times reverse three times honestly it's not that serious you can just do it once and it will be secure and like I said I'm just I'm not even really pulling on the cap too much. I'm literally just guiding the sewing machine. And then you pull it out and then you cut off the excess and then this is how it should look like. And then you just go ahead and just cut off the ends. And this is the first track and this is how it should look like and also don't forget to cut off this section as well sometimes I'll be forgetting but make sure you guys cut off the tail end of the weft as well but this is just the first line and then now we're just gonna keep repeating the same steps now I'm gonna do a few more so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing And that will basically be our second line. That's how it look like. Um, I'm gonna come back when I have the full one bundle on the wig, and then I'm gonna show you guys how it look like with just one bundle on the cap. Okay, you guys, so this is how it look like with just one 
bundle. And this is how the spacing is looking like. Like y'all see, it's not gonna really be showing like the the um, how far apart the things are. And these are very secure, they're not going anywhere. But I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up the wig, quickly finish it up and then and then we'll come back to actually close it off with the um, closure. Okay, so um, I kind of just wanted to quickly come on camera to show you guys. So um, now I'm starting to single weft. Like I said, you need to have an eye for this because um, you just basically have to have the eye for it because if you don't, you're going to end up, you know, well, damn. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Someone getting chased. I lost my train of thought. But yeah, like if, imagine if I started to, if I continued single wefting and this is all I had left, then clearly I will be, I will have all these space with no hair left. It's always better for you to have hair left over than you don't have any hair and you have all um, like hella room left for you to fill in hair that you don't have. So, because you can always go back in and like go in between the spaces and just add in whatever remaining bundle that you have left so um make sure that you guys keep that in mind so i'm gonna go ahead and just finish it off um basically by single wefting the the wig okay so i just finished and this is all i have left which is good i just throw that aside and then now this is how the wig is going to look like okay and this is how um it looks like looks very looks very neat and as you guys can see there's not that um that um silver from the marker so if you were worried about that it's not it doesn't show on the back and then this is how it looked like and like i said remember how i was the lines were so thick now look you can barely see it which is perfect now we're gonna go ahead and just finish up this wig So this is how it's gonna look like, is you're gonna have that empty space. Now, you're gonna take your closure that you put off to the side. Now you're basically gonna match up the ends and, and put it back in its place. Sometimes this part gets a little bit tricky, but you just gotta play with it to make sure you put it back the exact same place that you had it in. Once you do that part, you bring the front up and everything should line up. Okay, so this is how it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to fall right into its place. I'm gonna take my needle and thread. This is the this is the only part that I actually sew. Now, um, I have seen some people do this part with the sewing machine, but me, I don't think it's that necessarily necessary, especially if what if your customer wants to come back and just um, what if they want to come back and change out their closure, and if you have it stitched, it is gonna be a little bit harder for you to take it out. So, like I said, I prefer stitching because it'll be more easier if um, you do would want to you know exchange out the closure for a new one okay so what i am gonna do is i always start off with the back first and i do this mainly so the um the frontal mainly so the closure don't shift because as long as i anchor this part it won't stretch out these the sides and make them uneven well that's the reason why i do it now i don't know why other people do it but that's why i do it like i said i'm gonna just do the backs and honestly, I'm just gonna do regular um, stitches. I'm gonna do regular stitch. It doesn't have to be anything serious.
you can make the um this part a little bit more bigger so you can be quicker but me i like to put them a little bit more closer together so it can just be a little bit more secure and for the closure to be as flat as possible So I'm gonna quickly re-thread and then I'm gonna show you guys how it look like regular sewing. So I'm gonna come back when I'm done with actually, you know, sewing down the closure. Now since we're done, let me show you guys how it looks like. Neat. Um, if you guys wanna know how to sew, um, sew honestly, I don't know how what to tell you. I just did the regular old stitching method. We're gonna go ahead and cut the, the cap inside that's under the closure and then we will be done this is how it's gonna look like you turn it around now make sure that when you are cutting you don't cut like literally right on the the stitching you did leave at least a I don't I don't even want to say half an inch because it's probably a little bit more smaller than half an inch but at least a little bit lace let me show you guys you guys see how i left a little lace and i didn't cut too too close to the the actual sewing part and that's mainly because you don't want god forbid um if you cut too close um when the customer gets the the wig and then eventually since it stretches now boom the um the the stitching comes loose and then and that's because it was too close and then also this will come in handy when you do like you know if the customer needs to change out their their closure you'll have enough space for you to replace it then you'll have this left over and then this is how your wig should look like. I bleached it and everything, bleached the knots. So everything looks good. Now the only thing that's left is the styling part. And then I'll just come back when I actually have the whole wig um, completed and ready to go. Now um, on a normal basis, honestly your first time will probably take you about three hours, three and a half hours because that's how long it took me. But the more you do it, um, now I can probably get it done underneath an hour and 10 minutes and maybe if I'm really quick yeah an hour I'm really trying to get down to at least 50 minutes 45 minutes but um yeah but I'll come back once the wig is completed and ready to go okay you guys so don't mind all the crazy like the background because the background look a mess but I kind of just wanted to come in in the video because like I said I was going to come on and show you guys how the wig actually looks and stuff like that this is how I styled it this is actually a straight wig but um the customer wanted it to be a little bit more um how can I put it wanted it to have like a body wave to it but they also wanted it to be straight so um this is how it looks like yeah, I freaking love it. This is my Pocahontas unit. Um, and if you're interested, you can find it on the website. I'll link it. Well, it's always linked in the description bar down below if you guys are interested. But again, like I said, this is the final look. And I'll post any pictures that I do take if I take any pictures. And as you guys can see, like your wig will be flat. She's flat, okay? She's flat in the back. And everything, but... Let me know if you guys want like a curling tutorial or um, a plugging tutorial and stuff like that. Because I think that's what I'm going to kind of do. But let me know that in the comments down below. But I hope this video was helpful. Um, I hope you guys learned something. And make sure you guys let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye loves. Baby, baby, do the work, 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 work.